Hello. Hope you're doing well. Um, it can get quite frustrating waiting for the penny to drop with people. I've just been wondering today at what point do people start connecting the dots, putting two and two together. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's quite mind boggling at times, isn't it? And I definitely share people's frustration. Um, I, I was just catching up on some kind of news, I guess, headlines and, and stuff. And, um, I saw a list of the food production, food manufacturing plants in the States that have burnt down a list of 97 so far. And you just think, how is this not raising alarm bells with people? How is this not a huge thing, you know, across the... We know why it's not across the, the mainstream media, but let's just pr pretend for a second that the, the mainstream media was there to actually do the job that it purports it does. It would be a huge thing. Like, what on earth is going on? What's happening? 97 food plants up in flames. What on earth is happening? But radio silence outside our community um it's yeah that the whole the whole food thing at the moment is it's just so so transparent what's happening um it's a bit it's been happening over here as well in the uk um and, and around the world um we we were getting reports of um fires and all kinds of things causing uh, plants to shut down here in the UK um, last year, um, ongoing. So, I mean, this is this is going on worldwide. This is certainly not um, exclusive to the states. Um, but we're we're seeing this. You know, but at what point do people just not? view things as being a, oh that's a strange coincidence or yeah I find it difficult to get the words out um so we've had the cattle dying as well in the states um supposedly of heat heat exhaustion in temperatures that are no higher um, or not much higher certainly than they have been previously um and you know if they're if they're watered fed and watered correctly um there's absolutely no reason cattle can withstand incredible temperatures i've I've lived in India and I've seen um the heat that they can withstand, so clearly um something is very amiss there um it's they're all indicators of the dependence that is required for their system so we're told that the food system's in crisis so we we've got shortages coming and it's this unavoidable thing and of course it was handily predicted many years ago by the world economic forum and all of those cronies um you know as they were planning their agenda 30 um agendas 21 and 30 <clears throat> um so this has been long long time planning has gone into this and it's it's just so indicative of that just the need to control so we're seeing now that they're, they're not silly they know that people are taking things into their own hands and so of course you would think if the government was there to protect us and all they cared about was our health and well-being then 
okay there's a food crisis ahead let's just suspend our disbelief for a second and go along with okay that this terrible crisis is looming that was out of everybody's hands um it's all to do with the climate blah 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 you would think if that were the case that people growing their own food um getting their communities sorted out on a local level they'd be over the moon wouldn't that how wonderful everybody's got vegetable patches fabulous nobody's going to starve what do we see we've got oh avian flu's back here it is anyone who's got chickens you've got your pet chickens in the back garden so you've got your nice little egg supply there no dangerous they've got to be wiped out We've got the vegetable growers. I mean, this is ludicrous. Um, putting out that there's there's some kind of weird foam or something on, on people's plants. <gasps> so you shouldn't be eating them. You shouldn't be eating those plants. It looks to me like cuckoo spit. That's what I knew it as when I was a kid. Do you remember that? You used to see it. I think it's it's actually um, it's produced by a certain type of beetle. You see it all the time. Um, so who, who knows? But how convenient. They will do anything they can to sabotage any kind of independent living. Anything that's independent from their system. It's just so obvious what they're doing. It's... It's just so enragingly clear <sighs> that I just don't know how more people aren't seeing it. I really don't. You've got food plants being burnt to the ground, cattle being slaughtered, um, cattle supposedly dying from ridiculous, you know, clearly they've been poisoned or it's a mass, it's a cull. Um, they do not want people eating meat. I'm a committed vegan, have been for years, and I can see, th I've been able to see through the vegan agenda from day one. I, I became vegan when it really was pretty difficult, actually. You didn't have all this sort of convenience food. And to be honest, anyone who's really into health and, and nutrition, you, you don't want to touch that stuff anyway, because it's just yet more processed crap um you know I, I wouldn't advocate necessarily a vegan diet for everyone I'd, for one it's not my place and for for two it's it's not necessarily something that's suitable for everybody's kind of body it really works for me and I've got you know I've got my personal reasons for doing it I'm a huge huge animal lover um and I, I don't actually feel, I never felt really happy or, or healthy eating meat. Um, so that's just, that's just me. But I'm certainly not going to be cheering and woo woo. Yes, let's turn the world vegan because that what they want, it's certainly not people with a really well balanced vegan diet, which it has to be to get everything that you need you have to really balance out what you're eating and eat really well and a lot of people just aren't used to that and what they want is people dependent on their food supply so aside from eating bugs that's okay you can eat those you can live off insects but other than that no it's got to be all this plant-based so-called plant-based alternatives bloody soil and green if you ask me You've got impossible foods from our, our saviour, Bill Gates. Yeah, it's impossible, all right? Because it ain't food. You don't want to touch that with a barge pole. Um, they, they do not care about us. The governments who answer to... They are, they are owned by corporate interests all around the world pretty much without exception they're dictated to by these non-tax paying foundations 
So you've got the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Rockefeller Institute, all of it. And if you think that that, oh, well, that's the United States. I don't know. It's not. They've got their fingers in pies everywhere around the world. There's there's no borders for them. You know, we've got, so you've got the, the World Economic Forum, the WHO, all of these entities. And they're... They're filled with psychopaths. They're known eugenicists. And these are the people that are going to come and save the day from their manufactured crises. It, it just, it beggars belief. The information is out there. And again, like I said, when do people start joining the dots? It's, you know, they want going back to the food thing. And this has been going on for years. I remember seeing um, footage of, of private gardens being bulldozed in the States, this was. Um, vegetable patches, people were growing their own stuff, organic, um, you know, beautiful. And they were being destroyed because they didn't, comply with whatever absolute bullshit rule as if there should ever can ever be a rule that human beings cannot grow what is in nature all around us to feed ourselves wake up seriously what it's just the level of insanity and Stockholm Syndrome and Cognitive Dissonance is absolutely staggering. It's just every alternative is stomped out. It's been known for decades and decades that cars can run on anything. They were running them on vegetable oil back in, well, I couldn't even tell you, it was a long time ago. You had the guy um, created a vehicle that could run on water. You'd think these people, whoa, great, you know, all about the environment, fabulous. And not costing the earth, literally. He was killed or died in very, very suspicious circumstances. And this happens time and time again. So the very people who profess to care about it's all about us and our, our well-being and and getting people out of poverty and on and on and on it's not in their interests and our health well-being prosperity is not in their best interest because all they want is control it's out and out control and this is why we're heading at breakneck speed towards smart cities, constant surveillance. It's got nothing to do with lack. There is no lack of anything. So the fuel crisis, aside from there never, it's not, it doesn't run out. This we've, we've, we've fed an absolute crock about what oil is, where it comes from. It's, it's self-replenishing, but even if it's really, you know, it's not the best thing, fossil fuels, if you want to call them fossil fuels, whatever, for the environment, we have got all of these alternatives and where are they? No, because if they don't have control of them, then it's a no-go. It's all about control. There's no lack of anything. There is no lack of food water, energy, I mean, all of those free energy devices that have been absolutely stomped out of existence, out of memory, it's, it's for a reason and it's all about control and it is not about, I, I keep saying it, it's not because they fear we, you know, that they're going to run out, we want it all um, because there's not enough for everyone. They know damn well that there's more than enough for everyone 
food, shelter, heat, you name it, anything that we need, we've got it here and there's more than enough than we could ever use. It's not that they just, they do want it all for themselves, but they want the control over us. They want slaves. They feed off our energy. They feed off our fear. And the sooner people realise that, you know, the quicker we're going to actually get somewhere really tangible um, to, to change this around. Because it's the whole premise of this is based on this illusion, this story they tell of lack, finite resources. It's not, it's simply not true. And the moment they see that we're starting to take our power back, take things into our own hands, okay, if, if you can't get what you need in the supermarkets, we're looking at what we can do to provide for ourselves. And that's when, oh, all of a sudden, um, you know, there's there, there are reasons that, oh, we can't do that. Oh, and that be scared of this. You can't do that, but you can't grow your own veg because there's foe, there's strange foe. Oh. So, yeah, I, however, you know, despite getting very frustrated and, um, yeah, it is, it's just frustrating. It's just frustrating to, to see the lack of awareness still I do think the tighter and tighter things get when people really can't get food I mean there's been a massive boom in people growing their own stuff I mean I don't say that that's enough for us to get everything we need is to just have a vegetable patch but the ideas come as as we need them so once again, necessity is, is the mother of creation. And that is what we're going to see. But I, I do think things will have to get a hell of a lot more difficult for the majority of people. But what I would implore, really, um, people to do is really get involved in your communities, in all those initiatives. It's why... Um, we're trying our very hardest to get things introduced to people. There's so much going on all over the world. Um, all these different community projects, initiatives, people growing together, people getting alternative education systems, because, you know, that that's yet another control system. It's been degraded and degraded and degraded to the point where it doesn't even really function as any kind of system anymore it's literally pure indoctrination and they've had to wear us down to this point for that to be acceptable um it's what they've done with everything most of these um systems the big systems that we're all so dependent on the the kind of foundation stones i guess of of society modern society if you went back a few hundred years even more they would look entirely different because we were entirely different there was a nobility to things even when these things were, were designed to lead to our eventual downfall at that point in the beginning they did serve a purpose they did do what they were supposed to do because otherwise nobody would have got on board with any of it because we were pretty much self-sufficient you know we were sovereign beings all of us um going back quite a long time you know and these systems were put in place that were actually in alignment but it was with that knowing that just gradually degrade and degrade and degrade and it will be so gradual that people won't even notice and fast forward probably a few thousand years and look where we are. So we're right on the knife edge with it now. So it really is down to us. Um, and, you know, when you do start 
getting involved in these things and they grow. They do inspire people that seem to be very asleep um, because it's all about energy once again. I'm not talking about the people that are resolutely shut down, do not want to know and who will end up in these godforsaken uh, boxes that are, are classified as apartments or whatever in, in smart cities. You know, there's always going to be that section of society that we can't reach um but for for i i still say the majority overall um i think there is that they're gonna they're gonna realize they don't they're not going to want to live like that and they're going to be looking for the alternative so anything that we're doing it really is of service to humanity not just our local communities our little groups of people that we love and care for it really is for everyone and for the benefit of humanity so it's certainly not hopeless um it just gets really yeah frustrating it's just frustrating when you can see so clearly and they're so bloody obvious at times you think seriously who's come up with this like burning down food plots. Do you want to be any more blatant? Maybe they do. Maybe they do. But anyway, that's it. I've said my piece. I hope you're having a great day, um, evening, um, wherever it is you are. And I will catch up with you very soon. Um, we've got another interview going out um in a couple of hours i think by about six o'clock uk time um that's our first interview sorry not another one it's our first community matters interview um so yeah there'll be a series and we'll just be introducing people um who are are doing great stuff um yeah within the the local communities around around the country so yeah check check that out if you can and i'll speak to you very soon lots of love to you peace